My name is Ben Vickers. I'm editor at Bloomberg NEF in London. And with us, we have Lewis Lee, who's general manager of SunGrow Europe. Um, now, Mr. Lee, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, you manage one of the companies that has helped build out the solar industry globally. Now, the prospects for more solar to be added to the power system around the world are looking good, if not very good, actually. Now, from where you sit, where do you see the main drivers of a world powered by renewables? Well, addressing climate change and promoting energy transition to renewables matters a great deal to our future at planet Earth. Fortunately, the message has been uh, well received and we are beginning to become a global consensus. As for SunGrow, you mentioned that we have uh, 23 years foothold in renewables. It's clear that the shift to renewables is not purely down to environmental factors, but also because the technology and financial viability of that technology is able to support the shift to renewables, which I shall explain in more details in a moment. Historically, one of the biggest drawbacks of renewable energy was the uh, generation cost plus the uh, intermittency and the volatility of energy production. However, things have moved a long way. Firstly, the uh, cost of renewable has come down tremendously and will further decrease through consolidation. This trend provides lower LCOE lead us to reach a point at which renewable energy is becoming cheaper at burning, at burning fossil fuels. In many countries that this crossover has already been occurred. Meanwhile, traditional energy is becoming more expensive as more solar and wind get added to energy market, fossil fuel is being pushed to the margin, driving up their per unit cost even further. Yeah. Mm. Secondly, advanced technology reduces risk and increases energy security. By their nature, we mentioned that renewables are far more intermittent and volatile than fossil fuels, however, Thanks to advanced technology like energy storage and intelligent energy network, mm -hmm. operators can control the flow of energy, increasing balance, and better manage loads at the mass or the network. This in turn helps to manage risk by predicting and preventing system failures. All of this means that renewables is becoming a major viable energy source. Yeah, so there are various factors in there. You mentioned LCOE, so the cost, the levelized cost of energy, and also technological developments that ensure security of supply, for example. That's really interesting. Now, project financing, of course, is really, really important for the solar industry. Um, your company seems to be in quite a strong position, or a very strong position in this regard. SunGrow has been ranked 100% bankable by Bloomberg for a second year in a row. Now, question about strategy there. You're in a good position, but the renewables industry has long been subject to rapid change and requires companies to keep adapting. Now, what are you focusing on to ensure that your business model is solid for the next 10 years or so? Well, as you mentioned, project financing is vital for solar industry. At SunGrow, we really apportion much of this owner to be awarded 100% backable by Bloomberg for two conservative years. We fulfill our mission of clear power for all while maintaining sustainable growth and development. In terms of how SunGrow are focusing to ensure our law term in the sector, firstly, SunGrow will continue to invest heavily in R&D and keep innovating. We have the uh, industry's largest R&D. This provides SunGrow with a counting edge product portfolio to meet the global diversified demands from residential CDI and utility market. Mid to long term product and technical roadmap planning is another key factor to ensure our uh, substantial success. Currently, the world is still uh, dominated by 15,000 volts and 1,000 volt modules. However, we are now researching 2,000 volt, 3,000 volt applications. 
Secondly, talent and the human resources is the foundation of technical innovation. We have robust uh, long-term relations uh, cooperations with key institutes and universities, which makes Sangro a hub for talent and intellectual growth. Mm -hmm. Third, globalization and localization. We started our uh, overseas business in 2006, and now more than 20 overseas subsidiaries has been established with over 110 service outlets, which offers customer responsive and professional comprehensive sales, technical support, and after sales services. Meanwhile, having a localized structure help us to understand market requirements and our customer better, which could in turn enable us to develop the right product and solutions for each market. Interesting. It's interesting how important a localized structure is um, for understanding the market and the market's requirements. Now, turning to the technology, maybe more, more specific, you did mention higher voltage units and so on, and some of the R&D you're doing, which is obviously another one of those aspects that's allowing you to adapt to future changes. But is there, is there any new technology that's going to be included in the next generation of inverters that can help boost system performance? Uh, absolutely. For different market at uh, different application scenarios, the uh, requirement technologies varies. For example, for utility scale product, higher DC-AC ratios and uh, integration of energy storage technology are the uh, key technical competitiveness of next generation product. A higher DC-AC ratio can help to maximize power generation throughout the uh, daytime and therefore increase revenue. With increasing number of solar plus storage demands, a pre-assembled storage interface or the PV inverter is essential, which enables an energy storage system be easily added to existing PV system without reconstructing the entire plant. For C and I and residential systems, DC arcing is a concern, which has the potential to triggering uh, electrical fire. Therefore, DC arc detection and interruption functionality has been implemented in our 110 commercial inverters, which okay. becoming the world's first inverter to be awarded DC arc detection and interruption certification. Okay. This is just the beginning. However, we are planning for more units to be integrated with uh, AFCI functionality, which can sense arcing conditions uh, immediately disengage itself. That's, that's in really, really interesting. So in, in many ways with this sort of equipment, of course, it's a question of staying ahead of the curve of seeing what's coming. Um, and we'll, we'll come back to batteries and, and the integration of storage as well in a minute. Um, but looking a little bit more at the detail of um, how you're having to adapt Mod modules, solar modules are getting larger and larger as time goes by. Now, what changes in inverters are going to be needed to make them compatible with much larger solar modules? Well, the larger solar module will lead to some changes in the uh, DC input design of mm -hmm. the inverter. Right. And may also bring to a further increase in the DC-AC ratio of the uh, PV station. Currently, there are two different technical roads in large PV panel in terms of the uh, short circuit current. One is below 15 ampere, and the other is around 18.5 ampere. Right. Some good inverter solutions are designed to be compatible with both type of uh, technologies due to reasonable selection of DC fuse. The current DC fuse in our DC combiner box is up to 20 ampere. A DC fuse in your water is up to 15 to uh, 500 ampere. Mm -hmm. Our central water have been designed to match high power modules already. And our string water, which also be uh, upgraded next year to match high power PV modules. 
Exactly. So you're moving, moving with the market, as it were, in that sense. OK, now storage, turning to batteries, um, energy storage that sits alongside solar wind um, generation are a feature of the moment, really. And um, there are more and more of them being installed. Now, are new inverters being designed for systems of integrated PV and storage? And will the new system structure um, be bring any technical challenges for the manufacturing that you have? Yeah, sure. Actually, uh, our current May products already meet the requirements for energy storage system, such as uh, outdoor PCAs for AC coupling system, outdoor DC-DC converters for DC coupling systems, and PV inverters with pre-assembled energy storage interfaces. Compared with the uh, AC coupling system, the DC coupling system a PV system are more deeply integrated. Right. The PV inverter has more functionalities, such as reverse charging function, so mm -hmm. that electricity can flow directly from the grid mm -hmm. to charge the battery. Meanwhile, in order to meet different power grid requirements and policies, the DC coupling system can complete more complex operations quickly meaning that our system can operate nearly every grid in the world, whatever the requirements. Unfortunately, we have mature AC coupling system, a DC coupling system, and there are many applications already deployed across the world. That's really, really interesting. Okay, well, I, I think we're soon going to run out of time, but I wanted to, um, one final question, uh, we can't go without mentioning the pandemic, of course, because this is affecting everyone. Um, now, as a company, but also you personally, how are you coping with the coronavirus crisis? The pandemic was certainly a blow to uh, global business, especially during the uh, first few months of the year. But as for Sun Grow, we managed to ride over the wave and come back to uh, business as euro in quite a short time after swiftly put together a list of measures, including optimizing our global supply chain, mm -hmm. logistics, et cetera. Right. Uh, some group global coverage of localized offices and customer support, and also our international division continued to operate smoothly with minimum disruption. Okay. That's one of the reasons is because of, you know, we have uh, over 20 subsidiaries and also more than, more than 110 service outlet since 2006, recovering sales, technical support, operations, finance, and after sales services. Right. Take SunGrow India factory as an example. Although the local epidemic was at its very serious even now, the factory is currently running at full capacity managed solely by a local employee. To keep our customer up to date and informed, we implemented some creative concepts such as cloud factory visit, virtual intersolar, cloud signing ceremony, online workshops, and more. Right. As for me personally, as we mentioned, keep alert, keep positive, keep calm. <laughs> I'm sure that together we will tide over the uh, difficulties very soon. Yes, yes, we'll we'll all get through this. Um, it's it's incredible how adaptable we we've had to become quickly, but companies companies have reacted and the markets have reacted as well. But it's good to hear there's the the things are in many ways um, easy easy to manage in a way, and and having such a localized business, I'm I'm, I'm sure helps as well. Um, that's been really, really interesting. I wish we had a lot more time to talk because there's obviously lots of interesting topics here. It will have to be another time though. So thank you, um, Mr. Lewis. Thank you very much, Liz Lee, for your time. And we'll talk to you again very soon, I hope. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.